Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me. So yesterday I talked about the 15 ways to lead your wife. Today I want to talk about the nine ways to spiritually lead your wife and even your family. Um, so nine reasons. Let's go ahead and jump into it right after this. Okay, gentlemen, so the first way that you can lead your wife and family spiritually is to get them involved in one of the local churches there around you. It doesn't have to be the one that's across town. It could be, be the one that's around the corner in your vicinity that you guys can walk to if necessary. But yes, go to church together. You choose the church or you guys can pick the church together. But since we're talking about the man leading the family and the wife, then yes, go ahead and get involved in a local church church. The second way to lead your wife spiritually is for you to find books, articles, things for you guys to read together and to discuss them as well. Now, I know there are a lot of people out there who are not readers, but this would be a great way to keep the conversation and the connection going, especially when you are breaking down the stories in the Bible that one or both, both of you do not understand. And you guys can just have a real talk session about the characters and the stories in the Bible and then so you both can get a better understanding. Again, increasing your connection and um, also your knowledge as well. So you're doing it together. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the third way in which the man can lead the wife and ultimately the family is for you, yes, you gentlemen, to find messages or conferences that you guys can attend. And again, that way you guys can discuss what you guys are learning. Uh, again, building the connection together. But conferences or even um, videos online that you guys can watch. A lot of us like YouTube nowadays. Or um, there are videos on Facebook, just etc. Just videos that help both of you grow together in the Lord, in God, in Jesus, in my case, since I am a Christian. Okay. So yes, look for conferences and messages that you find online or that, that inspire you, that you want to bring them to your wife and you guys can discuss them together. Okay. The fourth thing I mentioned the family before. So this one is specifically to the family, um, where gentlemen, you can find ways to worship with your family at home. I know that some men, um, definitely have, and, and, and just people in general, actually, they have an issue with actually going to the church building. And, uh, for whatever reason, there are a variety of reasons, but, um, you can find ways to worship with your family at home. And you don't necessarily have to go inside the building to worship, although God does want you to be amongst other uh, worshipers and followers. So he would like for you to go um, in the vicinity because people get this kind of misconstrued about that you have to actually be in the church building in order to say that you are being a worshiper of God. Um, my husband is actually he's picking with me right now, but um, you don't necessarily have to go to the building. If you read any of the Bible verses, God does not say go to the church building. Um, what he does mention is that he is in the midst when you have two or three people there that are basically worshiping. Of course, I am paraphrasing. This is not his actual words, but he is in the midst when two or three have gathered together. That doesn't say that you have to be in the church building to do that. But getting back to this topic Men, you can lead your family, you can lead your wife by doing things, i.e. worshiping at the home together as a family. Gentlemen, the fifth way to lead your family and your wife is to make sure that you have a relationship with God before you try to implement this new thing or this continuation of a relationship with God. So you have to be the leader and you're not just the leader when it is conducive to you. If you are the leader in the household, then you have to do it in every area. And again, spiritually speaking, you have to have the relationship with God first before you try to introduce or implement and bring these things into your household because you are leading by example, right? So if you're leading by example, she was more willing to take it in and actually go to church with you or pray with you or, you know, just worship with you, period. Okay. 
The sixth thing that you can do, I actually just mentioned it, which is to pray with your wife, pray with your family, bring the whole prayer all together. That is, again, another way to connect definitely with your wife and with your family. It is a way for you guys to also, I've mentioned this throughout the video, which is to have conversations and lines of communication being open. And you can also see the way that both of you actually think about things and, um, some people have, when it comes to prayer, they think that they're supposed to pray a certain way, but there is no wrong prayer. It doesn't matter the length, whether it's two words or 55 words or an hour prayer. Um, your prayer is something that's coming from your heart deep down inside, and you are releasing these things to God, especially if you have like some worries, some issues, some things that you're definitely going through or a goal that you're trying to attain, you know, a new position at, at work, whatever it is. So just Make sure that your prayer, um, that you don't have stipulations on your prayer, thinking that your prayer has to be a certain length in order for it to reach God. So pray with your family, pray with your wife, and again, this is how you lead your wife and your family spiritually. The seventh way to lead your wife and your family is to see your role as being sent from God. The leader... You're making the decisions, the tough decisions. <laughs> You're the stronger sex. So all of that couples and goes together with you being the leader, which is why God created man first. And then he created woman from Adam's rib. We are a part, but this is why you were made first. Okay, so let's move on. Number eight can be controversial, but you know, yesterday I didn't get a whole bunch of likes yesterday because I was knocking some of y'all upside the head. <laughs> Well, my information, which I, I knew that that video was going to be a little bit controversial, but it's okay. I'm here to give the information, whether you want to receive it or not, it's up to you. You do what you will with the information. I am just the vessel that the information is coming out of. So without further ado, number eight is gentlemen, come on in, come on in mama, listen up. <laughs> I know that this one is going to sting a little bit, but some of you need to uh, realize that as the leader and uh, me being um, following behind you as the example, you have to set the bar high and you have to apologize and say, I'm sorry first. And again, I know that that is not going to go well with everybody, but it's okay. That's the way that it is. We all have our own opinions and this is mine. But as the leader, let's move the relationship forward. Let's get over this quickly. Let's move on with life. Um, it's not that serious. Just apologize so we can talk about the issue at hand and move forward. So apologize first. Apologizing first does not mean that you are right. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. It just means that you are emotionally mature enough to just move on from that issue as quick as possible. So pray about your situation. Ask God to give you the words. After you say, I'm sorry, yeah, you know, give you the words. So it's not necessarily you who's speaking. It is God speaking through you so he can deliver the message where your spouse is able to take it in, accept it, apologize back for their portion and why the issue happened and the um, conversation went downhill and you both can move forward and move on and actually forgive the person. Forgive one another, but also forgive um, and, and even forgive yourself for the part that you played in it. Because a lot of us put this pressures on ourselves to be um, like politically correct all the time and not to have flaws or showcase our flaws. And that's just not going to happen in most cases. You're going to mess up because you are human. But the more mature person... Um, says I'm sorry and just moves on so just just do it and let's move on the ninth and final way to show your lady to show your wife that you are the leader and she can follow you is just to really show her uh, or I should say find ways to show her little ways that you are there for her that you care for her that you love her that you support her that you are there as the leader as her man as her husband as the shoulder to lean on cry on but y'all in this thing together you guys are a team all right 
So family, let me know what you thought about these nine tips on how to lead your wife spiritually. Definitely give me thumbs up um, if you like this information. <laughs> My husband talking mess in the background. <laughs> he told me I'm getting the thumbs down on this video, which I think is funny. Anywho... Um, yes, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Of course, share with the people that you know who need to see this. If this is your very first time to I Love Me, 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 think about subscribing because here at I Love Me, 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 I'm supplying you guys with all of the tips and tools in order to have happy, healthy, romantic relationships because knowledge is power, but applied knowledge is better. All right? I will talk to you guys soon. Deuces.